murdered each other. I just yeah. remember swinging nonstop, you know? Uh, this is where I want to be buried. I did PCP with my older homeboy. Tell us about the Lezzy action in there. Oh, What's I've always been gay for the stay. I even <laughs> gay even before. <laughs> hey everyone, I'm Negra from Indicted TV and the LA2 Ferry. I am here on Drew Street, which is the block where I spend majority of my time growing up. I sell drugs here, I smoke drugs here, I play with my friends here. I brought my son up and down these blocks as well. Shout out to all the senoras, all the homies that still live here. Follow me on Indicted TV and subscribe to my channel, which is Indicted TV. What's up guys, it's Johnny back with another episode in Northeast LA in the Avenues. This is a world famous LA neighborhood. Uh, we're gonna take a little drive and see what it's all about. Let's go. This is a little neighborhood kind of wedged between Highland Park and Pasadena on the east side of LA and they call it the Avenues. And it's essentially just like two or three streets but unlike the rest of LA and especially this area it has not been touched by gentrification. So you see uh, people, everybody on the streets from Guerrero or they can trace their roots back to Guerrero, Mexico. And you know, you see the houses, you see the gang graffiti still there, right? Like it's, it's an active neighborhood. Um, this used to be littered, lined with dope dealers back in the 80s and 90s and early 2000s, gang bangers. And of course the feds came in and wiped everybody out, but clearly there's still, there's still a lot of stuff going on, but it's kind of fascinating because it's a beautiful, area you know you're up in the hills you've got you know the serenity that you know more affluent people white people this is what they love and what they pay for in LA but they have not made it to this part of the neighborhood so we're gonna interview somebody she goes by La Negra and she's kind of a legend in this neighborhood and she has a fascinating story so we're gonna go get up with her and she's gonna tell the rest of it Hey. You're gonna have to learn the. You're gonna feel the real uh, Drew Street experience. <laughs> I said, "Hey, um, is he able to use the restroom?" She said, "No white men allowed." <laughs> <laughs> wow! Listen to that racism canceled. Shout out to Drew Street. Shout out to Northeast LA. Shout out to the 3200 block. That's where I grew up. I'm here. I I had no idea uh, women like this existed. I thought it was only in Edward James Olmos movies that uh, you know, hot no, women. No, we're like everywhere. We are beautiful Mexican. Right. Women. The street in the 80s, 90s was extremely intense. Yeah. Intense. You had drug dealers, gangbangers all up and down these streets. Literally like 10, 20, 15. Just every house was like, um, but it's just family. Like cousins and everybody's related mm -hmm. and um, they're just doing their thing. Yeah, and it's all Mexican? Or all Mexican. Right. So it's not like they were like being harmed or yeah. anything. If anything, I feel like they felt more comfortable. Yeah. Things are completely different. Like this wouldn't be able to happen before. Even at 11 a.m. on a e Sunday? We no. We just stand it's out just, here and film? I mean, no, it didn't matter what time because there was always somebody here. Hustling. Like I would be here all day. Right. Hustling? Yeah, yeah I'm doing my thing. Getting money? Getting money, smoking meth. <laughs> whatever <laughs> yeah as you do as you do yeah you know it's what we did it's smoking primos which is like crack when we yeah. like all of us and it's just how it was damn you escaped meth face though thank <laughs> god well you know what drug addicts don't really have a look it's just a human that thinks there's a drug addict look but in reality there's not i still have my teeth everything well i think maybe i think there's a cutoff i think you can smoke meth up to a certain point because i've been to jail you know what i mean like there's and i'm from oregon so okay. it's everybody there is on meth oh yeah so, do the people that get locked up are they coming home now yes majority of all of them are almost all out obviously yeah. there's certain ones that got like 25 things like that yeah. or there's some that are just never never coming home. home right and um it's just completely different yeah like i feel like it's what it needed sure to an extent, but I mean, it doesn't ever go away because the gang is the gang. Uh, just uh, not here. It's not as, it's not how it was. I just can't explain it. Got out of the game at the right time. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I technically didn't really get out of the game because I feel like games really in your heart. Sure. I just don't do certain things that I used to do. 
Yeah, yeah, no, no. The hustle, the game is the game. It's whatever. Like I'm selling. hustling every day still. Of like course, right here is what I'm doing, right? Yeah, I'm here yeah. doing this for a reason. Yeah. Let's uh, let's take a drive. I want to continue this conversation. Okay. When I moved here, it's because my parents got divorced. Okay. And my mom, uh, her boyfriend at the time, as soon as my parents got divorced, this is where his family lived. But he was black, half black and white. Right. There's a lot of crossover. I yeah. That. This is why we moved here, and I think I was I, I was in the fourth grade. Yeah. Now, is this uh, the cemetery this right here? This is the Glendale Forest Lawn, yes. I definitely have a lot of friends in there. Oh, that's, that's fucked up. So yeah. do you remember their murders? Do you remember that? Were you yes. on the street still when that happened? Yes. Some, yes. And some are still, like, recent, you know? And do those happen around here in this neighborhood? Yeah. And what was it like? Was it, like, the drive-by shooting of South Central, or was it more, like, targeted assassinations? Both. Okay. Both. Because, um, you know, where I'm, my neighborhood, my gang, where I'm from, it's avenues, right? Yeah. And um, there's a lot of, we have a lot of big people in our gang. So, you know, if you don't, something doesn't go the way you want it to go, it's how it goes and you got to go. Yeah. Things like that, you know? Right. So, before our people didn't get murdered, we murdered each other. Right. If that makes sense. Sure. But it's just the way the game is, you know? Now, what kind of, so you said there'd be drug dealers posted everywhere, up. Everywhere, on, everywhere, everywhere. Like literally in each, in each house. Like I had friends in each house. Like this house was one of the main ones that got broken down. Like the government right. took it down. Right. Now, would, th would that still be happening even with all the dope dealers posted yeah, up? You'd still have like the, was, the grandmas and the, the elders? Everybody, wow. everybody. Like everybody was like, hey, hey, the cops are here. We had people in different places. Everywhere. Right. Yeah. Now, was, so, was it meth? Was it crack? It was crack more than anything. Okay. Now, in those years, you know what I'm right, saying? Right, right. And uh, who was coming up to buy? Was it just people from the neighborhood or was it no. white people? There was white people, a lot of Armenians, people from everywhere. Right, because you're so close to different neighborhoods. Yeah, you're, a you're, lot of Armenians. The, right, because Glendale is right over right, here. Right, this way. That way, yeah. right. And if you, I always feel so at home. Wow, look at this. Yeah, this is very unchanged. Like, there is some new development, but... You can tell that people have lived here for, for years. years. Old Mexican families. You know how you tell the generational families? They all have the big gate still. Yeah. The big sliding gate, you know? Yes. When you see the wood gate, that's, that's white people. That's when it's different. Exactly. Yeah. As your kind. Uh, yeah, sure. My kind. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. In those days, were you also a drug dealer or were you just kind of... I was both. I just did whatever I could do so I could maintain my habit mainly. Right. And however I was going to pay my bills, you know? So the third window up there... On the top is where I lived. Okay. For like 25 years. Wow. Yeah, here. Wow, look at that big ass fucking building. Yeah. And now was that. Was Apartment that, 8 is where I lived. Was that mostly families or, or families. drug addicts? No, or? no, no. Okay. All families. So did you start off smoking crack or doing coke? Or no, how did you get I, into meth? I uh, started first, you know, smoking weed. Yeah, of course. Normal, you know, that's how it starts. And, um,. And then I started smoking Primos more than anything, What's which is primo? crack with weed. Like we would smoke like 20, 30 a night. Whoa. All night. Yeah. Just stay up smoking. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And taking turns because that's how we would do like take turns selling crack. You know, it's your turn, your turn, your turn. Right. And, in the, like and in the meantime, you stay up by using your own yeah, product exactly. a little bit. Okay. Yeah. So it's not like I was this major drug dealer because right. I definitely wasn't. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Now, did you feel like you were part of a gang because I'm trying to figure out the difference between gang banging as we know it in popular culture right and just drug dealing narco no, I, narco traficante yeah I was definitely not a narco traficante girl I was more of like the gang right so you you dated probably dated some gang members and yeah but you know what I, I never really like it wasn't like I, I there was always men in my life right yeah because it's just the way it was but not like I wasn't I wasn't this narco traficante girl yeah, at all yeah. it was just me chilling on the block with the homies yeah so yeah I, you know because I went to this elementary which is Fletcher I went to this junior high which is Irving and we all went there together mm -hmm. so I didn't really it didn't really feel like oh we're just all game bangers like yeah. yeah we were you know but it's not like we were just friends you were friends you're just a group of friends exactly just a group of friends it's all the same. Yeah. It's, the only thing that really changes is the people right. that move out. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. From that, from Drew Street 
right. by itself. Now here we are. It kind of starts to get nicer as you push up this way. Uh -huh. like a, you know, a little higher end. Um, what are the elders, what did your parents, or what do the parents of people who come from Guerrero, it's probably really poor, that's why they come over here. Yes. You know, are they heartbroken when they see their children getting into Most definitely. A lot of them and, have lost their children. Right. And um, I had a friend, well, his mom used to come pick me up and we would go get some crack so that we could take him home because it was the only way he would, they would be able to bring him back. Oh. So imagine that, you know? It's terrible. But yeah, like, you know, they lose their, their children, yeah. but they were also there taking care of us. Like, right. the cops were coming, you could run into their house. But there, I have like four friends that are literally here and one up here. How does that make you feel right now? This is where I want to be buried. <laughs> Next to your friends? Just next to where I grew mm -hmm. up. I don't think that feeling is ever going to go away. It's yeah. who I am. What, what, was the, what did it feel like to lose friends at the time? Was it, was it just part of the game or did you feel, do you well, feel regret? I definitely feel super heartbroken. I don't know about regret because I don't know. You know, like I did, I was, my feelings were, I was on meth, remember? So it was kind of more numb and it was just kind of like, it's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes like you get life for a life. You get take a life, you get your life taken. Mm -hmm. It's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. Tell us about how you caught your case. When we first noticed, obviously there was like a big murder, the cops. It was like a big old thing, right? Um, what do so you mean a big murder? It was like a few murders. Uh, the cops killed one of my friends in front of their house. My friends went in a shootout with the cops right here on the Drew Street where we were at right now. Wow. Um, so after that happened, it just kind of got a little bit more I'm sure they were always watching, but it was like more intense. Like right. they would be a lot of undercovers just posted on the block. Like mm -hmm. if they were gang members, um, obviously we knew they were gang members. They knew we knew they were cops because mm -hmm. I mean, we didn't know them and they would pretend they would catch drug dealers. Right. Like they will sell to them. And I guess that's who that's how they will start getting informants. Well, did you wake up to the No. Raid? OK, so it was like four o'clock in the morning happen? and my guy friends would just left the house, my house. We were watching the 50 Cent movie. We, I made chocolate <laughs> cake. We smoked weed because they didn't smoke meth. Yeah. I only smoked meth, but yeah. I smoked, you know, I didn't really like any of none of my boyfriends or anything were meth users. Yeah. Only me. Oh. I didn't like that shit. Right? <laughs> <laughs> only I can do that shit. You know? Yeah. Um, no, but they were just my friends. We were just eating cake, whatever. And as soon as they left, I heard like, boom, 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 boom. And I'm like, what the fuck? So remember, I lived upstairs, so I was able to look out my window. And I just see like smoke and like cars going really slow. And I'm like, shit, what the fuck is happening? So then I just hear boom, boom, boom going up my stairs. I live on the second floor. And then they knocked on my door. Yeah. I should have said they should have broke down my door, right? But yeah. they didn't, thank God. Wow, so they were nice. They, they yeah, knocked. they were very nice. Because sometimes they just bust through. Yeah. If it's really, if they feel like people are there to kill them, they'll just yeah. knock your shit down. Yeah, it was crazy. It was like four o'clock in the morning. Started like bombs. People going up my stairs. They got like seventy-five of us in what, that one morning. Oh, so it maybe was like, like seventy or something like that. Wow, but so it was got, a whole indictment. It was a whole indictment. Sounds like it's a federal indictment. It right? was definitely a federal indictment. It was a RICO act. Okay. Racketeering. Um, and what do they charge they, everybody with? Everybody got charged probably, like, you know, uh, racketeering, conspiracy to racketeering. Yeah. My charge was distribution of crack cocaine mm -hmm. and conspiracy to racketeering. Wow. So you're just this low-level crack exactly. dealer. Exactly. I was just this meth person, you know. But they put you into a into a whole indictment. Yeah. Uh, in, well, it was like, it was like an avenue indictment. Gotcha. So, so it, it was like a gang. It was a gang. It was indictment. a gang. Gotcha. But um, one of the main ones, she wasn't even a gang member, which is. They have documentaries on her, and hers is the house, which is the one that got uh, taken down right. by the city. And what uh, was the deal with that? She was, what was her story? She, was the, she had all her boys, uh, dealers as well. They were uh -huh. from Avenues. Um, one of her boys is who got killed right here, literally. Oh, my. Uh, right here. Her other son died as well. It wow. was just, you know, it was... Um, a big thing. People would say that, oh, she's the Avenue's mom, but she didn't, she wasn't from Avenue's. Her kids weren't from Avenue's uh -huh. until l later when they were already getting arrested. And um, she didn't even like the homies. So people think like, oh, it's, you know, like it's her or whatever, but you know, it was her. She was making millions. She was making a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But um, it was, it was the Avenue's, you know, it was her. She wasn't from Avenue's, but she was the one making money here. Why did, uh, tell me about the murders involved in that case. 
uh, so a, a cop ended up getting killed. Uh, I heard. Yeah, something like that. I was like, that was one, but mainly it was my guy friend that got killed here. And and that who killed him? The cops, because they were in a shootout with the cops. Okay, so they got in a shootout with yeah. them. Yeah. I mean, that's some uh, that's some gangster shit. That's well, you yeah. Know, you got to be prepared to die. Did you feel that? I, did you feel that? Maybe not yourself, but. The, the the men that you were rolling with did you did they have that I'm not scared to die yeah mentality and you know what's so crazy because the guy that died the day before I made him he wanted he wanted um crabs or lobster or some shit and I was the only one that knew how to make it <laughs> so I made him his like I feel like I made him his last like meal that he wanted wow. which is so fucking crazy like because I still remember that he's like damn nigga make me this. And his sister-in-law didn't know how to make it, right? Yeah, you gotta do is fucking put the crabs in the boiling water. Yeah. And that's it, you know? And I did that and So they took everybody to jail. We went to the Dodger Stadium. That's where they had the campsite. It was huge. Holy shit. And I still didn't know what was happening. Wow. They didn't find anything in my house. Everything was fine, you know, and they were very nice. They my mom lived in Beverly Hills at the time, so they allowed for me to call my mom for her to come pick up my son so yeah. i was definitely super grateful about that because i mean my son didn't go in the system you know yeah and um how I, old were you at the time i was 25. okay i will be 41 now okay so you really were out there running for a while yeah from the age of like 15 to 25 that's pretty long time yeah and, and you were pretty you had a pretty bad drug habit at this point your, your yeah. meth habit was yeah. out of control yeah but um I still, I, the only reason you would know is if you knew me or you smoked with me. Because mm -hmm. I still look nice. I was yeah. just very skinny. Yeah. Extremely freaking skinny. Scary thing. Yeah. yeah. I am so glad I didn't. You know what? That's the only reason it scares me like, to ever even try to even think about using drugs. Because mm -hmm. I don't want to be ugly. <laughs> that's the best motivation. <laughs> Absolutely. I don't want to be ugly. No. That's, that's, a, that's probably worse than death, I would say. Honestly. <laughs> fucking walking around here looking shot the fuck out. I didn't, when I was smoked out, I looked shot the fuck out. Yeah. Every single time I had to go somewhere, I'm going to the block first. Mm -hmm. Coming back, I'm going to the block. Everything was about the block. You can see how it's a it was an active dope neighborhood though, because there's you can if you're a junkie from wherever, a different neighborhood, you can pop in really quick and then just be out. Yeah. But you know what? It makes me so sad that it's I mean not that it's not like that, but in a way like we did so much and we worked so much to be able to make money on that block. Yeah. And now you just, it's not the same like at all. Which yeah. is good, you know? It's good, and it's, I think I know what you're saying. Like, it just breaks it, my heart that it's not the same. Yeah, anymore. I know what you mean. There's a nostalgia there. And, and also, you know. Like, it hurts me. Like, even, like, when I like, go and I don't even see, like, my little homies out there. Right. Like, it makes me feel like, damn, what the fuck? Like, what the fuck is happening? Totally. Like, I, it's not, you know, and it's not yeah. that I want my boys to be out there fucking murdering right. things like that. Right, right, just Right. It was just what we worked so hard, and it was just yeah. so different, you know? Yeah. Like you know? literally, we just had a, it was just all day, 24 seven. And people just drive up? Mm -hmm. Wow. And not even like, just little rocks. rocks. Yes. So, Tents. so what was your case like? Did they have a bunch of undercover buys? Like in your paperwork? Mine was like, oh, uh, cause we were able to hear the, like the recording and stuff. Oh, we yeah. have the girl black. Cause they call me Negra, right? Uh -huh. uh, there, she's walking up to her. Our guy or whatever his number was, is walking up to her. We're going to mm -hmm. see if she's able to you know, give it to them or right. whatever and things like that. But they, I've never actually been caught. Right. They didn't catch you with any dope. They got you on the wire doing yes. it. Yes. On a phone call. Yeah. Um, oh, they had your phone tapped. Yeah. But it wasn't even like, I wish I would have been able to get charged for a phone call because that's only like two or three years. Right. Right. Um, what were you, what was the maximum you were facing? A 25. 25. Yeah. That's scary when you see that in the paperwork. Uh, so you know United what? States I it wasn't even really scared because I know that they're always going to tell you the worst. Mm -hmm. So when you're in and out of the system and you already know what the fuck is happening, you know, okay, this was just saying this shit. They're not going to fucking give me that. Yeah. You know, what can you when do? You're with the fans, like, come yeah. on. You're yeah. not there for no reason. All right. So. So everybody copped out. What was the, what were some of the sentences? 15 to 25, 25, because we have two different indictments. Everybody from my indictment is already out. What was the more serious indictment? What were some of the crimes? Well, just the murder ones. Okay, gotcha. So they're still in but there? But like, though, yeah. Um, but he was like the Look at that, the fuck 
maybe not the murderer, but he was like one of the main ones. Right. You know, I don't want to say that he's a murderer or whatever, but. So he cooperated to yeah. get a time I think cut? I think it's to get his family out. His wife yeah. and yeah. things like that, you know? Main, like my most of the years I did it in Minnesota. Okay. And Wasika. How was that? It was pretty chill. I just worked out, wrote letters. Nothing major. Yeah. I only fought one time. Mm-hmm. Or twice, I should say. Never mm-hmm. in prison, only like in the, in the county. Um, <laughs> what was that fight like? The uh, county jail fight. We, we, we were drunk. We were drunk. We were drunk. It was always about drinks. Always about alcohol or some shit. You know what I'm saying? Fucking drug addict ass bitches. <laughs> but no, it was it was pretty chill, honestly. Like, how do I, you fight? Do you fight like a girl, or do you ball your fists up? I mean, well, you gotta be like this. Yeah. I just yeah. remember swinging nonstop. You know, as long as <laughs> whatever, as long as you get back up, it doesn't matter yeah. if you get fucked up. That's right. You know? That's... Oh yeah, because I've been jumped so many times. Mm-hmm. I've been stabbed in my eye, cut my hair. Wow. Like, yeah. Who, who stabbed you in the eye? It was a girl. Okay. Where? It was on Drew Street. Oh, shit. Me and her got in a fight two times. Because, you know, she thought I was being with her baby daddy, which I finally was. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, Who cares? Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's part of fucking life. It is yeah. what it is, you know? Uh, you know what? The worst time about doing time is just that you just miss your family. Yeah. It's not like it's all crazy or like... Yeah. You know, in federal prison, like high-level male federal prisons, it's... People are getting stabbed every day. People are getting yeah. killed every day. For women, I don't... I've never seen that at all. Tell us about the Leslie action in there. Oh, I've always on? gay for the stay. Even <laughs> gay even before. Right? <laughs> hell yeah, hell yeah. So. Um. Yeah, I always had gr- girls. All, I'm not. I'm not an ugly person, right? Of course not. So girls always like me, and I don't. I never like the butch ones. I don't want no boy ones. Right. I like pretty girls, you know. Did you have a girlfriend in prison? When I had a, in prison, I had a girlfriend. I was with her for like a year. Now is that a sexual relationship, or I think is that it's just kind of more, more of like we're like best friends? We right. think, went to go eat together. We showered at the same time. Do you kiss? Yeah. Okay, this is great. I love all this. Yeah, I'm sure you do. You fucking little perv. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, when I was in prison, this is how cruel the prison I was uh, at was. They wouldn't sell. There was a rumor, anyways. The hot dogs. It wasn't the hot dogs. It was the Starburst. They didn't sell on female commissary because, because they could melt them down and make dildos out of them. Oh, I was going to say why. Because they would put them in them and then send them to the guys or something. <laughs> Maybe that too. <laughs> Probably. You know us guys. <laughs> yeah. Perverts. Yeah. Yeah. I just thought that was weird. I was like, why wouldn't you just let these gals, uh, you know, yeah. get a little No, girls uh, would make dildo. dildos out of anything, even like the bandages. Yeah. Like, you know, those uh, bands to wrap yeah. your hands? Yeah. Put, like, put them all, like, all of them together and put it in the glove and even make, like, the legs. Yeah. To, like, you know, the strap-ons? <laughs> yeah. That shit was, I, I never have, guys. No. I, I, that was kind of too intense. Like, weird shit for me. I don't like that shit, mm-hmm. you know? Now, did, how many females I were like you? I was the only one, really, at my time. In that whole scene? Yeah. Wow. That was with the guys 24-7. Yeah. It was mainly just me. And were you like, did they protect you yeah. more than the other people? Because they, they kind of felt like they were guarding you. Um, they had to guard you. They just kind of treated me the same. Right, right. Like, were you expected to put in work? Like like carry a gun and shit? Yeah, I did. You had a piece? Yeah. Did I lost have... a few of them. Those fools got mad. It is what it is, you know? <laughs> did you ever have to bust at people? I I mean, you know, my dad... Um, was never really there he would just pick us up on the weekends and obviously after i hit a certain age like i'm not going with my dad anymore right my mom worked she's always worked for the four seasons she was right. always at right. work and i was just at home with my sister yeah so i mean what is she gonna really do you know um once she started letting me go out at a certain age like it was impossible for you to stop me after right that, right you know so that's where it was. Obviously, she was always heartbroken. She got really sick when I first started going to jail. Yeah. Like, you know, depression. Yeah. And um, then she just kind of, would, not adapted, but accepted yeah. what it was, you know? And right. one of my favorite guys in life is this is his little spot right here. And hopefully I have a bug. Right here. Because this wasn't like this before. Is it, is it here? Now, uh, tell us about this. Were, were the bums here before? Were the homeless no, people none here of this, before? No, none of this was here before. All right, tell them negative came. Okay. 
I was gonna give him something, but don't worry. Oh, he is? All right. Are you coming out, fool? You're right. Yeah, yeah. It's not easy. Did you I, go through like uh, drug treatment while you were in prison? Um, I've been to a lot of rehabs. Mm. That didn't work. No, that didn't work. What, Unless, what was the key for you to stay clean? For me, I feel like I had to be away for a very long time so that I could feel how it is to feel sober in the real world. Uh -huh. Or give myself that chance of being sober for a long time and me liking it. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Probably felt emotions you hadn't felt in a long time, yes. right? Yes. Is this Drew Street? This is Drew Street. Uh, what do you want, Prime? Uh, puerco. Puerco. Eh, a mí de pollo. Dos de pollo, entonces. Y uno de puerco. You're my fat ass, you know. ¿Usted cuánto tiempo ha estado aquí haciendo, vendiendo tamales? 15 años. She's been selling tamales here for 15 years. So, usted vino a vender tamales después que ya todos se fueron a la cárcel, ¿verdad? Yes, I'm a few years. Pero eso es como de todo el tiempo que yo no he estado aquí, casi 15 años. Desde 2008. Bueno, se llevaron a todos. ¿Cuánto le debo? Son este, 7.50. ¡Ay! ¿Cómo estás? Bien, ¿y tú? Bien, bien, gracias. Ando trabajando, Hola, chicas. Trabajando? Ando trabajando, sí. Una estrella bien estrellada, ¿eh? No, no. Gracias. ¿Cómo estás? Bien, ¿y tú? Bien, bien. Ya no te había visto. Ya tengo tiempo, ¿verdad? Yo tenía mucho tiempo. Tengo desde... Como antes que se fue el Roy. Ella vive aquí, ¿no? Sí, ella vive aquí. Sí, pasaba ahí en el edificio. Con los muchachos, ¿se acuerdan? Uh, usted sí se acuerda. Pero ahorita como ya estás tres. Es que ya como no. ya estoy más llenita, Ay, ya, ya estoy más grande, ¿y no? Ya me, ya, cambió, ya me con, ¿cómo, cómo? Ya me ya com se compuso. Ya bueno, está bien, está bien. sí, no. Porque la loca nunca se quita, ¿verdad? No, pero, algo, todo está bien. pero gracias a Dios que pasamos por las cosas que pasamos para ganar las experiencias de la vida, ¿right? Así es. Así es. Sí es. Mucho gusto en verlas. Gracias. Gracias. Ay, sí, sí, igual. What? I got you a chicken wing. Perfect. Thank you. Gracias. You're welcome. I got a chicken wing. Uh, we got some tamales de Guerrero. Fresh Estero from uh, Guerrero, right? Estero Guerrero. Ah, these are hot as fuck. One thing is true about Mexicans. They like carbs. Let's see on them. Yes. <laughs> I am hungry. I haven't had any. Okay, who's this right here? So this is my dad, and this is my mom when she was 16. I have my stepmom's name, because I love her. Domi? Domi. What is that short for? Dominga. Dominga. She hates her name! <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, those are my, this is my family. Uh, uh, what do you have on this side? Uh, this is my son, the oldest. Laker fan. Yeah, this is an actual picture of him um, when he was younger, obviously. And this is my youngest, which is Cupid Valentino. That's his name. And then I had a miscarriage. So this is the miscarriage baby. The, this one right here? Yeah, the little Dumbo. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And this is like my... The skull, skull, skull. Yeah, this is like... Uh, so the skull is like what we represent, right? Uh -huh. So it's like always grabbing on to this beautiful woman, which is me, but I'm kind of both. Yeah. I'm both, you know? Yeah. So it's like always trying to like keep a, grab a hold of it, but she's still always beautiful, you know? Wow. That's what that means. And then this is like um, California. This is yeah, me. Wow, look at that. And this is like the years I was down, mm -hmm. the helicopter, the Drew Street. Mm -hmm. um, LA, look at that. Yeah. And it's just like the Echo in Mexico symbol, mm -hmm. obviously, you know? Tecate. I think it's on uh, Sona, too. No, this is called the Echo in Mexico. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah this yeah, is yeah. the Echo in Mexico symbol. And this is like my first tattoo, like a long... This is like probably like 20 years old. It was a cover-up, right? One of my ex-boyfriends. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, okay, we should probably a fun story, right? <laughs> I got his name, and I went to go visit him to show it. And I caught him at visiting with another girl. 
in Wayside, like he was, I, I went in because like in Wayside, yeah. So there's like two different things right here, like two visiting people, right? So they're on this side. I was supposed to sit on this side. So I went in and I saw oh, and he was on this side the with the fuck? fucking girl. So you caught him cheating I while you were in jail. Yes. Oh my God. Think about how bad you have to be at cheating if your girl's in jail and she still catches you. <laughs> what a fucking idiot. <laughs> and then um, the next day I covered it. Wow. In jail? No, I was out. Oh, you're already out. Oh, I was I out. You. I was visiting him. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Before, this was to be so crazy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Traffic, right? Foot traffic. Just people everywhere. Yeah. Like, it will, people will play outside cards. They'll be gambling. The ladies, like, all night. It was it was so different. Like, such a, like, family vibe, mm -hmm. you know? But obviously, there they they wasn't, like, enemies really, really come in, like, at all. At all. Obviously, you know, time, whatever, but... And you could tell who was not from the neighborhood, but who was here buying, right? Exactly. Yeah, because it was always... It wasn't a gang member looking person. It was a... Uh, it was a person like... A normal person. Sketchy like drug addict. Your, yeah. Like your ass, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> no, <come on. laughs> I look more like a cop, I think, than a drug addict. <laughs> uh, okay. What do you think? What do you think? I think you look like both. You were probably on the cover fucking all on the corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna bust your ass for not letting me use the pisser, fool. Hey, it is what it is, you know? You have the right, you have the right to refuse. <laughs> <laughs> I need a warrant to go yeah. take a piss. Who introduced you to that? Oh, girl. Oh. It's in the party scene, like in the 96, 97. That was like, you know, the party crew area era. era. Uh -huh. And Beaver, she was like my high school friend. Yeah. I still talk to her. Wow. Um, Interesting. Who would you buy it from? Just people on the, on the yeah. block? Got it. So, the, so, the, so it was like crack houses, meth houses, was there any heroin? Not really, okay. not like now. I mean, obviously not here, but. Yeah, yeah, okay, I was just wondering, yeah. Yeah, I didn't really see, or like PCP, you know? Right, I think that was a little before our time. Oh, yeah, I, I think I the PCP smoked. was. PCP. <laughs> you're like, oh. Super. <laughs> you're like, cry me. Super slow motion. <laughs> Yeah, I, I did PCP with my older homeboys, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, that, I was that, young. That wet. I was very, wet. very young. You know, and everybody was older around mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. You got, what would you do, like dip it in a cigarette? Mm -hmm. or, is that it? It's called a dipper. God, you're, you're, <laughs> like, you're fun. You're fun. How would you describe yourself? Fun. Um, you're fun, Christina. Yeah, I'm pretty funny. I, I think I'm super funny. I don't know how to describe myself. Pretty fun, loving. Caring, I could be a fucking bitch. You real, know? real. I'm just myself. I'm 40. What the fuck? I can't be fake. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for having. Me. Or thanks for. Yeah, you actually had us. That's true. You, you had us around here. I thank you. This was a big favor. Follow me on Indicted TV and subscribe to my channel, which is Indicted TV, and that LA Tooth Fairy. <laughs>